let the, let this be a season also for us for forgiveness. I think if nothing more, what a great tradition it would be for us to learn to forgive those that have offended us, those that have done us wrong, those that have spoken ill of us. Welcome to the Badass Dad Podcast. KDH here on the microphone in the Iron Yeti Studios. Very excited today to have my, my buddy Buck Rogers. What's up? And the uh, the FNG Academy YouTube channel that is absolutely blowing up right now. Man, how does that feel? I mean, it's only been, what, a month maybe? Two months. And Two we months. we hit 11,000 today. 11,000 subscribers. I had a video that already has 65,000 views on it just just making it happen man it feels good yeah if if it, it doesn't it doesn't it feels good that you know it's we struck the nerve and that we were we're moving honestly i'm just a little i want it to move faster i want like i want it everything yeah you know you get a taste of it and you're like let's okay cool a thousand but let's get five thousand a day let's get let's yeah let's get those numbers and not not like there's no end to that, but let's get those numbers to a point where at least once we're at 100,000 subscribers that it's like, okay, now we have um, a platform that gives us the ability to contact the people that we admire and want to work with. And yeah. then they actually say like, okay, this could be beneficial for both of us. And that's my goal is like, it needs to be at that level as soon as possible because I want to start making moves with, you know, important people in the game and, but doing it in a different way. Right. Cause right now people talk so much or people do so much about just, you know, talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, dude, we could really add some cool videography, you know, that people are doing, um, and just combine those two, two worlds. So you get these really cool videos to watch and with, you know, some of the coolest people to talk to. Well, and it's so much fun because you've grown a ton. I mean, it was it was only like I think it was two weeks ago you did a video saying, "Hey, I'll do a live uh, stream or something like that." You know, if we get a, a thousand subscribers, yep, yeah. and I mean, and then you got it, and then it really just continues to blow up. And you're, yep. I know you're learning a ton, make a ton of great uh, connections with people, um, you know, and just leading the charge. You know, I mean, Stephen and I early on, you know, when when we started talking about this and what we want to do with the Badass Dad podcast and everything else, you know, we, we want to be a part of also helping launch, you know, we're, we're a small piece of helping, you know, launch these great rockets. And it's, it is so exciting and thrilling to see Absolutely. what you guys are doing. So, well, yeah. And it really came down to this podcast and you guys invited me on. It was like, it was the first time I even put my story out there mm. was on this podcast. And so to put myself out there, I mean, I was hammered. I was hitting the whiskey in the <laughs> that, was the, that was the Jameson episode. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we ended up uh, archiving that one. Yeah. So yes. yeah, yeah. I like uh, protecting the guilt and or whatever. I showed up exactly. I showed. I was in the car hitting the whiskey because I was all nervous. Yeah, and uh, as soon as I come in, Stephen's like, "You want some whiskey?" I was like, "You know, I want some whiskey, bro." <laughs> and so I really started hitting. And before you know it, I'm like cursing up a storm. I'm like going, I'm going ham on anything and everything that bothered me. And it at the time, I'm still an active dude or I'm still cop. So right. like, uh, you were like, well, I think you we're, can't. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to protect you on this one. <laughs> My job is to protect and serve you at this time right now. So. I was going ham on all the people that have ever pissed me off. It was just nuts. <laughs> but, but it was but, cathartic for you. Yeah, it was a huge uh, opportunity for me because I'm like, wow, telling my story felt really good. How could I continue to do that? And and that really launched, um, thinking about uh, the podcast or the YouTube and the FNG Academy. And the book was already... In the, in the works, works. Yep. right? Yep. But the book wasn't going to be anything but something to put on my shelf and know that it was therapeutic for me and my PTSD and, and mm -hmm. getting over, getting through my past trauma. So it was really just for that. Yeah. Um, and then now it's looking like, I honestly think it'll hit um, some bestsellers. Wow. Well, and it's so much fun. And, and I don't know where we are with what we've released on that podcast as well, but we've talked about things, PTSD. We kind of delve mm -hmm. pretty deep into some of that. Um, but yeah, once again, man, I just, I, I just want to let you know, man, I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for what's happening. Uh, the courage that you're just out there, just taking the action and making it happen. It's all the work that you're doing. So great, great job. I appreciate it, man. I couldn't have yeah. done without you guys. Well, thank you. Um, Hey, today I want to talk, you know, here we are. Um, it is 2020. It is November. The, uh, election is over The you know, whatever's going to happen with there, but life continues to go on. I know we talked about that a little bit last week. 
And, uh, but we're going into the holidays now and I want to talk a little bit about traditions and the importance of, you know, as badass dads, it, it, the importance of having traditions, what, what traditions represent. And then, you know, what we do you know, with, with our kids in particular, I mean, here you are, um, you know, Pam is what, you know, what, six, seven months pregnant now, somewhere uh, there? she's gotta be second. I think she just, she's about five months now. Five. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, about to have another little one, yeah. you know, on the way, Thank God. You, You've got your daughter who's nine years mm-hmm. old right now. And so, um, you know, traditions are important. And going into the holidays, many times people think about traditions around the holidays. But I don't want to say these are, you know, totally unprecedented times, but they're, they're a little different times. You know, we've uh, on, on this podcast this last year, we've talked about everything from death, you know, my, my mom passed away earlier, uh, about a year ago. You know, we've had other people we've talked about. We've talked about divorce. Uh, we've talked about loss of jobs. We've talked about adoption. I mean, we've talked about a wide gamut of things and just, you know, in, in so many things to remember and are important. And part of the role of traditions is to remember. It's to remember and to celebrate. It's to remember and to not forget what's happened in the past. And I know, you know, coming from the military background and and specifically the Green Berets, there are some traditions that you guys have and they play vital roles. Sometimes they can seem mundane. They can be like, oh, why are we doing this again? Mm -hmm. But they're really, really important. Talk to us just for a minute or so about just some traditions coming from a military background that, I don't know, maybe you appreciate it, maybe you didn't appreciate them at the time, but you look back and you realize here's a great value for these traditions. Yeah, so for us, especially in the Green Beret community, it's like taking care of each other and looking out for the guys that we've lost. Um, And so that's what, honestly, one of our biggest traditions are these black bracelets. Um, They always have the name and date of, you know, of a friend that we've lost. And we recognize each other through those bracelets. We we can recognize the pain and the suffering through those bracelets. And, And, you know, Green Berets don't like to any special operation, any military really doesn't like to talk about, um, things a lot. So we show that through, you know, tattoos, we show that through, uh, bracelets. Um, but these become our traditions, um, to express what we're feeling in a way that that's comfortable for us, you know, and, and it's, it's kind of a universal thing. So we do have those traditions and, and Green Berets do look out for each other. That's one thing I've noticed, especially since getting out is like, like if a Green Beret is doing something in business and you're a fellow Green Beret, like you, you're going to promote his stuff or he's going to promote yours. And it's just part of the culture that, you know, I would call that our tradition is that we look out for each other. Yeah. That, and what a great tradition that is. And, you know, both of us, well, we, we had similar uh, up, upbringings, mm-hmm. you know, yep. and, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know about you, but there weren't a ton of traditions that I remembered, you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe, you know, getting uh, a, a present on Christmas Eve, you know, get to open one that day or, you know, whatever, but there weren't a ton. And so, you know, with my boys, we want, Gretchen and I, we wanted to have some great traditions. We wanted some things that would be anchor moments that would be, that would set the stage for the season. Um, you know, maybe lessons we need to teach, but also having fun. You know, have there been some traditions that maybe you and Pam have implemented, you know, with your daughter or? or yeah. Daughter? I mean, for, for us, we're really looking forward to expanding our family, but traditions for the holidays are, are just huge for us. Cause we just, it's that, that family time. And like, um, like last night, we were watching the fights and Pam spent like five hours making tamales, oh. you know? So my yeah. wife's Peruvian and, and, um, so tamales are a big deal. And, you know, when she's making tamales from scratch, I mean, that's a, that's a process mm-hmm. and that's a lot of hard work, but you know, that tradition of her doing that and like, you know, the, just getting to relax and, and watch the fights and, you know, coming in and helping her and to see my daughter now just be like, ah, oh, tamales, like, yes. And, and to get all excited about it and to bring in my wife's culture. Um, that's, that's something that's truly powerful for us. And it, it creates these moments where it's like, you're just having, your, your heart is just full. Mm. And that's what I love about the family traditions and the holidays. And like you said, we, you know, growing up, we didn't have those. Um, I remember at one, one point I was, I was 14 and, uh, it was my birthday and like eight o'clock at night, my stepmom walks in and hands me a 
blank uh, white T-shirt that says happy birthday. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> 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 it's like, but so what do you do with that? Do you feel bad or do you just create the real positive ones that you wish you had mm-hmm. with your family? And yeah, that's that's what we try to do. Well, yes, I, you know, it, it, it is – it, it's fun being a little bit on the other side, you know, with with our boys in particular right now and the holidays and, you know, even some things that I, I've never really gotten into. You know, I'm not huge into decorating lights on the house and all that stuff, but, you know, my oldest Jay was like, hey, I want to put lights on the house. And, you know, just some of those things that are traditional, um, they haven't been traditions for us. Uh, you know, we, we have a tradition that we do every year on Christmas Eve. And this actually goes back to right before Gretchen and I um, got married and it was part of a, you know, a, a place where we work together, but we do uh, blueberry pancakes on Christmas Eve. And nice. so, you know, it, it, cool. it's just, it's just a thing that we do. We, you know, we've had traditions over the years, um, really until just the last few years where we would have people over to our house and it was, you know, Colorado was kind of unique in the you know, only like one in six or seven are actually from Colorado. So you got a lot of transplants that are here. And um, so we would have people that didn't have family in town come to our house. And, you know, we had one year that we had over 75 people at our house for Thanksgiving. And wow. we just we just love letting people do that. And so when, when we would have people to our house, we would say, hey, listen, I'll take care of the turkey. I'll take care of the dressing. You know, I, I got to make my cornbread dressing, you know. Um, but then – uh, everybody just bring whatever is traditional from your family, you know, whatever reminds you of Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so we, we just always had fun with things like that. But I think it's a moment, whether it's decorating a tree or putting lights on a house or, you know, putting the pumpkins out or, or whatever it is that you get to spend time with your kids in a little different and you get to have different conversations with them and you can share lessons or you can start talking about, Hey, you know, I didn't really get to do this as a kid, but here's why we're doing this now. Or maybe you did, maybe you did this. You can talk about, Hey, you know, when I sat on my great grandpa's lap and we would tell stories about this, and you can pass on those generational experiences that are so much fun. It, it could be something as simple as this. You know, I know there are a couple of uh, friends of ours in our neighborhood that went and got their pictures taken, their holiday pictures taken, you know, which is kind of funny because Gretchen and I, we like get the camera out and do a little mm. selfie picture. That was, That's my plan too. <laughs> That's what we did. Um, but it, it, it could be special foods, you know, whether it's the tamales, you know, Gretchen's a huge baker. And so, you know, she's baking all these, this stuff. It, it could be a movie that you watch together. It, it, it could be a prayer that you have. Uh, it could be something that you're reading together, but something where there's a connection during this time. And let's not miss this moment. In this year of 2020, where we've had, pandemic, people have lost jobs, you know, uh, you know, death, birth, um, all sorts of things that have gone on. Schools starting, schools stopping, you know, I mean, all different things. And there's so much chaos, so much is moving under our feet. The sands are shifting underneath our feet so much that traditions can come in and give some calmness. They can give some peace. They can give some direction. They can remind us that this too shall pass, that this is but a moment for us. And so I just encourage all the badass dads out there right now, take a little extra dose, a little extra measure of patience during the season. You know, unclench your butt cheeks and, and, and just have a little more fun. Be a little more present, you know, with, with your kids, you know, take, take the time, muster up their energy, get another Red Bull or what, get another discipline from Jocko and then go put the lights on the house. Let the, let this be a season also for us for forgiveness. I think if nothing more, what a great tradition it would be for us to learn to forgive those that have offended us, those that have done us wrong those that have spoken ill of us, those that, you know, may not even know. You know, one of the things I've learned about forgiveness over the years is that sometimes I'm forgiving people and they don't even remember what the hell they did. (laughs) They don't even know the pain that they caused me. And I think some of the most important forgiveness we'll ever do is to forgive our own selves. And so I, I think maybe making it a tradition that right now slate gets wiped clean. This is a time that whether it's pandemic or no pandemic, whether it's an election, no election, whether it's, you know, loss of job, I'm going to school or not going to school or whatever it is, get to finish the season, not get to finish the season. This is a, this is a time for us to make it a tradition that we're going to choose love 
over hate, that we're going to choose to unite um, and and not let petty things come between us. This is this is going to be a, a, a new experience uh, for me this Thanksgiving because um, we are going to get to have time with family 2.0. So as my boys are calling it, so the the new Texas family that we have, uh, we'll be seeing them here in a couple of weeks. So we'll be getting to see, uh, you know, the, the, I've met them, but now my boys and my wife will be meeting, you know, brothers and sisters that, that they have not known and, and my biological father. And, and it, it's just going to be an interesting time. So I'm just, I'm interested to see what are the new traditions maybe that happen from this. We're going to get to have a great time to go down to Waco, Texas, and get to spend time with our other Texas cousins, which is always fun. But I think that's so incredibly important. I think those are the memories that we're going to look back on when we're retiring on those memory dividends. And we're looking at going, man, I remember that, those Thanksgivings. I remember what we used to always do. And that's what brings us together. And that's what anchors a family together as well. So, Buck, I just want to, first of all, I want to thank you. Uh, this week, later on this week, we will be... Um, celebrating Veterans Day. And so I want to thank you for your service. Well, thank you. And uh, for all the men and women that are out there that have um, made it more than just a tradition, but made it a service of their heart to protect our freedom, to protect our liberties, uh, to fight for us, to fight for people that couldn't fight for themselves. Uh, Thank you for the men and women in blue that continue to do all the wonderful things that they do to protect us and to serve us and, um, you know, to to create security for our families out there. And for all the people, whether school teachers, uh, firefighters, uh, you know, anyone out there, anyone that is willing to stand up and be a badass dad, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for your courage and your commitment um, to making this world a better place. And for you to be a badass dad, man, it speaks volumes because that's how change is going to happen in this world and around this world by being a badass dad. So have a badass day, be a badass dad, and we are out. Hey guys, just want to thank you so much for listening to the Badass Dad Podcast. Uh, We do need your help though. Um, A couple different things that that we can use. We we want to grow our podcast and our message out there. We are getting so much great feedback from you guys, but we need your help. So we want to make it into the top 10. So if you could please, I I guess sharing the podcast is a huge, huge benefit. Um, Also, if you'll comment. So if you'll leave us a comment, like leave us a review um, and some five stars would be great. Uh, the other thing is, if you have a subject you'd love for us to cover, maybe there's something you 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 know you like the subject shows or an interview, or if there's someone you want us to interview, if you could communicate with us, you can hit me up at kdh at badad.org. So that's kdh at badad.org, or you can go to our Instagram, which is Badass Dads Podcast, and uh, leave us a direct message there. And I'd love to interview people, love to hit, hit the subjects you guys want to hear more about. Thank you so much for helping us grow.